it's great having your tools right at your fingertips. And this easy project makes it simple. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let me show you how I make this easy garden tool storage using a mailbox. If you're at all like me, there's just a couple modes when it comes to using the tools in your garden. When you know you need them, you probably just stick them in your pocket and carry them around with you. If you're not sure when you need them, well, often you just put them down next to the spot that you use them last. I do a lot of that. I have trowels all over the garden just waiting to be used. Why? Because we tend to be lazy gardeners and we just don't want to walk all the way to the shed or the garage to get our tools. That's why this simple project is so nice. We have our tools at our fingertips, ready to use in the garden anytime we need them. Essentially, we're creating a little mini shed to store our hand tools. Some of the biggest problems with leaving tools around, like I often do, is that they're exposed to the weather. They can rust and break down and often get lost. But with something like this, you always know where your tools are and they're protected from the weather. Now you can build a little mini shed, but with a mailbox, it's extremely simple and very inexpensive. This is a galvanized steel mailbox. You can also find them in plastic and they're available at Walmart and all of the big box stores. This whole project cost me less than $20 and I'll have it in place right here in my garden for many years to come. Most often you'll find the mailboxes in black or white, occasionally gray. I chose a white mailbox, but the stark white just doesn't look right in my garden. So I decided to paint this box a pale green to match some of the raised beds that I have in my garden. And that was the very first step, was to paint the mailbox. So it had time to dry as I moved to the next steps of this project. Choose a location for your little mini shed right in your garden, where you'll be able to access it without any difficulty. I don't recommend putting it in the middle of a path because you don't want it to interfere with your normal gardening activities, like pushing around wheelbarrows and dragging hoses. So slightly to the side, but right where you're going to use it. Once you've chosen your spot, then just start digging your hole using a shovel, a post hole digger, an auger, whatever it is you have at hand. Now, I predetermined the height of my mailbox at 32 inches, and I'm using a 48 inch post. So that means my hole only needs to be 16 inches deep, and that will provide ample anchoring. You can modify the depth of the hole and the height of the post as you see fit. With the hole dug, go ahead and put your post into the hole and then start filling some of the soil into the hole. Now, you want it to be well anchored. So as you put soil into the hole, I recommend that you take just a spare board and start tamping down the soil around the edges of the post. And then periodically take a level just to make sure that the post is perfectly vertical, that it's plumb in all directions and then add more soil, tamp it down, and then bring the level out again. And then add more soil and then tamp it down and continue this until the hole is mostly filled. I've been trying to compact dry soil, but wet soil compacts much better. So at this point, I'll add some water. After allowing the water to drain, I'll go ahead and come back and tamp down this wet soil, which should give me a much more compact base. And then I'll make sure 
that it's still plumb. And then I'll put some more of the dry soil from the hole and give it a final tamping down. I opted to use this 4x4 post because it matches my basic garden design. I have a lot of wood elsewhere in the garden and a lot of 4x4 posts like this. But you could easily use a steel post or stacked bricks or even an old log that you bury and use as your post. Let's go ahead and finish this project and I'll show you how I attach the mailbox. I'm using a one by six deck plank that I have cut to size to fit the bottom of the mailbox. And now I want to find out where the center point is. So I'll just draw an X between the corners. And the center point will go on the post. I want this board to be centered on the post. So I'll measure all the different sides to make sure that it's equidistant. And it is. So now I'll drill a pilot hole at the center point. And then I'll drive a two and a half inch screw this is the initial anchor but I do want it to be strong all the way around so I'll add a couple more anchors And that'll be enough. This is nice and sturdy. This board's not going anywhere. With the paint on the mailbox dry, now it's time to put it on the post. But there's a minor problem. This one by six decking board is actually five and three eighths inches wide. And it doesn't match the bottom of the mailbox, which is six and one eighth inches wide. So when I place it on the post, it's going to wobble back and forth. I want it to be centered. Well, there's a 6 8 inch difference between the post and the mailbox, so I split the difference. I cut a 3 8 inch spacer, and I'll put this on the side as I drill in the screws next. I need a screw that's long enough to bridge this 3 8 inch gap, so I'll put the spacer in. And I'm using one and five eighths inch decking screws. And these screws are actually self-drilling. So I don't need to start a pilot hole. The spacer is just a temporary way to ensure that I've centered the mailbox. I'll be using it on both sides. So I'll just have the spacer in place and then continue adding the screws. And I'll just move it to the next one to make sure that it's centered. I keep the tools I use most often in this mailbox storage, like my trowels, a cultivator, a weeder, and some hand pruners. Now, I suggest that when you take out any of these tools, go ahead and raise the flag on your mailbox. 
This is an indication that you have a tool somewhere in your garden. And it's just one of those little reminders that you forgot to put it into this awesome little storage and that you're reverting to your old ways, which will lead to the degradation of your tools. I think this is such a simple project, especially because it doesn't cost much at all. It's one of those things that you should do in your garden. And I wanna thank Albert Hardy for suggesting that I make a video about this type of storage. If you wanna see other types of projects you can do for your garden, I suggest you watch one of these other Gardener Scott videos. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.